Hi YouTube viewers, I'm back for another video. It's the next day, still on lockdown. And today we want to talk about what are the options for trying to get some of the old content, specifically programs I've written, off of these floppy diskettes onto another media so maybe you know I can view them and even use them somewhere else. I mean my concern is that you know eventually this technology is going to stop working become totally obsolete you know or I won't be able to read these whatever the case may be so you know that's what I'm going to set out to describe here because I did find a workable solution and I have the secret weapon back here so let's move the camera get you in a little closer and we'll talk about it so the device is called a floppy emu and I uh, found out about this by connecting with a group of enthusiasts of the Apple II platform on Facebook. And, you know, this was created by a hobbyist, a very clever hobbyist, I might add. And it basically allows you to emulate a floppy drive onto a micro SD card. Right, and this micro SD card can hold hundreds, perhaps thousands of floppies worth of content. And then you can use it just like it's a, a floppy. So I have this configured right now and connected to the second, as the second, I'm sorry, the first drive on my disk card. This one is the second drive, the way it's configured. So when I turn it on, you know, it will go here, and I have this pre-configured to go to the DOS 3.3 master disk. So it's actually reading it now. It's doing what it would do if it was reading the floppy, right? Because all that content is there. It's obviously faster, works better. It's quiet. It's not clicking and clacking. But the nice thing is, if I do a catalog on this right now, it's going to return the contents of the master disk. But what I can do, I can switch to another disk simply by going into the menu and moving down to, let's go to this blank DOS 3.3 one, there it is, and do a catalog. It's just like putting in a different floppy. I assume that'll come back empty and it does, right? The, the volume is the, that's the default results of the volume. So that's basically an empty diskette. So that's pretty slick. Now, to give you an illustration of what I did in order to copy my content off of my floppies, we'll move back to the we'll move back to the DOS 3.3 master. I'll do a catalog again. Oops. Can't type. There it is, we're back to the master, just proving we're there. And I'm going to load up the copy A program, which is the program that can actually do a disk, complete disk at copy. So I've loaded the program. Now we need to modify it, we need to make a minor modification. So at line 250, we want to set FT equal 100. And that will prevent it from doing a format before it does the copy. So in theory now, when I run this program, it's going to ask me, now I notice it's reading it from the, you know, it was reading it in from the program in from there, which is fine. So I'll, it's saying, where's the original content going to be? Well, it's going to be in disk two. So that's slot six. So we want drive two. And then the original is also slot six, but it's going to be drive one. So now it's ready to do the copy. Now I have to change this because I'm going to point to that empty that empty diskette that we had looked at before. So now this is set up to use the empty diskette. I'll put this disk in as the one we're going to copy. I have no idea if that diskette's readable, but we'll find out. So now you can see it's reading 
from the original. Notice it's slow, noisy. Now it's writing here. You can see the activity. You know, there's a status as you can see the different tracks it's writing to. I'm going to read some more. Now it's writing. And of course, it's going to repeat that or attempt to repeat it for every sector or every track and write them all. I think it's got one more chunk of work here before it's finished. Here we go. I think that was the end of it. Oh, a little more. Oh, there it is. Okay, now we're done. So that was successful, apparently. And I'm going to go ahead and exit the copy program. I don't want to do any more. But in theory, we copied that disk. I'll say no here. Exit the program. Now if I do a catalog. Oops, it's doing it. Notice it's trying to read it from here. So we'll do a catalog because it, it left it on that is the default drive so let's do a catalog of disk one there it is so now we switched over and I'm sure that's the same contents of what are on here so that's cool but that's only half the magic so what we're gonna do is I can actually turn this off now and we can take this micro SD card this beautiful little goodie we'll put it into one of these adapters that will let me insert this into my Windows machine so we'll go to the Windows machine now and we'll we'll talk about that you know and we'll see how we can read this and what we can do with it here we are on the Windows machine and I'm using a utility called cider press cider press is designed to let you read the disk images that come off of various forms of Apple computers. So I just did an open of the folder that is represented by the micro SD card. So at the root of that micro SD card, you can see that there are folders named Apple II disks, Slice of disks, and Macintosh disks. We go into the Apple II, which is obviously what we're using. There are two subfolders there. The one I care about is the 5.25 inch 140K. So this is where the disk images exist that show up on my floppy emu when I have it connected to my Apple II. And basically there's a file for each diskette image. Some of them come standard with the floppy emu, others I've created just by a simple Windows copy paste. Now the nice thing about Cider Press is I can actually manipulate these folders. I call them folders, they're actually diskette images. Again, each image or each diskette image is just a file. If you were using uh, Windows Explorer, you wouldn't get any further than just seeing the files. But with Cider Press, I can actually go in to the contents of the diskette. And you can see there's a listing of all the files that are on it. Actually a better listing than what you would get by doing a catalog on the Apple. And I could further open one of them up, assuming that it's a Apple Soft basic program which this one is you can see I can actually edit it very nicely right here with this utility so I think this is terrific you know I can actually see my programs I could you know kind of interrogate and try and get re familiar with how they work maybe come up with some documentation for how they worked if I ever wanted to actually try to demo them again but there you go. So, you know, making the copies that I did of each diskette was pretty simple. If we go back to the, the root here, what I basically did is I created a copy of this blank DOS 3340K file, which has nothing in it. Oops. 
you know, but I created one and then I just renamed it for each diskette image I wanted to copy to. And I came up with a simple convention of emu followed by a sequential file number. And then I put a little description afterwards to try and remember what they were. And so I've copied, you know, 22 floppies worth of diskettes over here. And I put a sticker on each of the original diskettes to reflect this emu label as well, just so I could correlate the diskette back to this file. So it's pretty cool stuff. So that's the next piece of the magic. Okay, let's talk about the final piece of magic. And that would be an Apple II emulator that runs under Windows. This is some brilliant technology in my opinion. Apparently this has been around for a good 25 years, but um, fortunately people are you know, continuing to maintain this and keeping, keep it working. Now I have it you know, installed and it's not really installed, it's more like you just copy it to a folder slash subdirectory, you know, on your Windows system, but it's called Apple Win. And the other thing I've done is I've taken those disk images off of that micro SD card. You know, I just made copies of them and put them into the same directory. So let's just run this emulator. Okay, there it is. So Pretty straightforward stuff. What you have over here on the right hand side is the ability to map a disk, you know, a diskette drive to any one of the diskettes. Now, I happen to have it, you know, I'll just leave it on this one, you know, the first one. I actually set, set up, so we'll do the, just do an open there, and then on drive two. I'll throw this programming utilities one on there. Now to run the emulator, we just hit this this Apple, this kind of running Apple here, and it kicks off. It actually boots up. So this particular disk image does a catalog, and so it's showing us a catalog of that first diskette image. This Mort 1.0 may look familiar from a previous video I did. So we'll just let this finish and just get down to. All right, so now we're back to the prompt. Let's load that Mort 1.0 program. You notice this looks exactly like. Okay, it's loaded. Now we can actually list it. There you got a break in on it. Control C gives you a break. And now we'll just do a run of the program. Now what's interesting to me is that this seems to run at the same rate as the Apple II, which I find to be really fun. So we'll run our mortgage program again. Interest rate will go with a current 2.99 percent. I'm not really doing this very well. Typing this in. 200,000 we'll borrow. Okay, I took that. We'll say yeah, let's go. And let's run that principal summer report. I don't know if you remember how long this took to calculate before, but it seemed like it ran at least 30 seconds. So it's, here we are simulating a 1 megahertz CP 8 bit CPU on a smoking fast i core 7. So, as you can see, with this emulator, I don't even need the Apple II anymore. And while I haven't dug deep into this emulator, you know, you can set it up to emulate all kinds of different output screens or output monitors. I think it's pretty functional. There you go. There's our result. So this is really cool stuff. So I, I pretty much can do everything I, I, I might want to do right here on my Windows machine now. I think it's really neat that people have kept this platform alive. Thanks for uh, spending time with me.